Well, good morning, everyone who joined when we were praying. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody just in case someone does not know how to do that. All right. Um, it is so good to see everyone this morning. I, um, I don't know how everyone's feeling. I've talked to, there's Danielle. Okay, Danielle, don't hang up before we have a chance to connect with you when we're done. <laughs> um, so I don't know how everyone's feeling this morning, um, you, know, you know, where you're at or how you're doing emotionally or spiritually. I think everyone's in a different place um, depending on their life situation. And I think also just um, because we're all made so very differently. Um, but, you know, one of the quiet times I had, uh, the, one of the questions that was asked was, um, how is your soul? You know, how's your soul today? And I thought it was an interesting question because I think of my heart, I think of my emotions, I think of my mental health. But I never asked that question, how is my soul? <laughs> and I had to think about that for a minute. I had to go, well, what does that even mean? Um, and I think it's a good question because we know that when we read the word, um, the word of God is what feeds our soul. We know that God is the only entity that um, can soothe our soul or calm, calm our soul or um, give our soul passion, fill us up. And so, um, you know, yesterday, Tony had talked about, for those of you who couldn't make it, he talked about um, Peter and how, um, you know, Peter, uh, that Jesus was walking in the water and he wanted to come to him. And, um, and Peter was fine. Peter actually walked in the water, the only other man who ever did that outside of Jesus. And um, then he started looking around and he was like, whoa, what am I doing? This is crazy. I'm, I'm walking on water. And as soon as he started looking at how bad the wind and the waves were, he started to sink. And, um, and he made a point yesterday that I hadn't thought about. He said, you know, he didn't fall like a rock to the ground. He slowly sunk. And I don't know what the significance of that is, but I think that is sometimes what can happen during this time. Um, but I wanted to play a song for you guys, and hopefully you'll hear it clearly. Um, the song is called Thy Will Be Done, and my devotional kind of springs off of the song and the concept of how is your soul. And so when we talk a little bit after, kind of think about the words of the song, the scripture, and, and answering that question, how is my soul today? And we'll have a little discussion on that um, after the song. So. Hopefully this is okay. I'm so confused. I know I heard you loud and clear. So I follow through. Somehow I ended up here. I don't want to think I may never understand that my broken heart is a part of play. When I try to pray, all I got is hurt in these four words. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy This don't feel good now. I know you're things I could never think about. It's hard to count it all joy. Distracted by the noise, just don't make sense. The wall is on the Sometimes I gotta stop. Remember that you're God in life. Yeah, not so 
Amen. That I know you see me. I know you hear me. And I think some of the words that I love in this song, it's called Thy Will Be Done. Um, there are certainly times in our lives when we don't comprehend what all God is doing, right? It, it's, um, you know, the words say, I'm so confused. I know you heard me loud and clear. So I followed through but somehow I ended up here. And then she says, I don't want to think, I may, I may never understand that my broken heart is part of your plan. But when I try to pray, all I've got is hurt and these four words, thy will be done, thy will be done. Um, and then she's like, um, I know you're good, but this doesn't feel good right now. And I know you think of things that I could never think about. It's hard to count it all joy, like the scriptures say. I'm distracted by the noise, just trying to make sense of all your promises. Sometimes I just have to stop and remember that you're God and I'm not, so thy will be done. I love that song. I love the message. Um, and it ties so much with what Jesus says uh, in John chapter 37, John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38, because I think as a Christian, one of the things I, I know I feel really strongly during this time is I want to be a great citizen. I want to do what I'm supposed to be doing in terms of all the instructions given by health officials and um, particularly for us who live with my parents or in that high risk category. Um, at the same time, I want to give to people. I want to be able to have my light shine during this time. And so the, the trying to figure that out and trying to figure out um, you know, why this is happening in this time, in this moment. And um, if you watch any sort of media or go on social media, everyone has a reason. And particularly spiritual organizations right now have lots of reasons as to why this is happening, right? And um, in lots of spiritual insights into why this is happening. But I think it is safe to say none of us can truly determine what God is doing <laughs> and why he is allowing. Um, because we do, I believe as a Christian in his sovereignty that it is either within his purview and he's allowing it or he is doing it. And so whatever the reasons for me as a Christian and whatever it's bringing into my life as a result or your life as a result, for me to get to the point when, and we'll read the scripture in a, in a minute, um, for me to get to the point where I can even be a resource for people, I light to people, I have to surrender whatever it is I'm thinking and feeling or going through 
to God. I have to give that over to him and say, God, I don't get it. And I do need to just stop and remember that you're God and I'm not. So your, your will be done. And if that means I stay on my knees till I get it, like a child on my knees till I, I get there, thy will be done. And this is what Jesus says in John chapter seven. He says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within. Jesus is the one who says, guys, you know, come, drink. There, there's, there is a well from which we can drink that will never, ever be empty. Our bank accounts may look like they're getting lower and lower. Um, our refrigerators might look like they're getting empty. Our emotional capacity may feel like it is getting depleted. Our patience, if we have children, um, even our connection may feel fragile because we live alone or um, you know, we aren't feeling connected to other people. All of those things have the ability to be depleted. But God, Jesus says, if you come to me and drink, you can drink and drink and drink, and it will never be empty. And I think if we are going to have our souls filled and our souls not become weary and burdened, if we are going to be able to be a source of encouragement to each other, but then even to this world this lost world we we need to drink and drink and drink and drink and drink until we are filled until our cups are so filled they have no nowhere else to go but to overflow and and give to other people and so that song it moves my heart because i think it moves my heart because i feel that sense of for so many people what are you doing, God? Like, you know, I think of people who just got jobs. We were just fired up and celebrating. And then it's like, now it's gone because they can't go into work. Or, you know, I think of the women's event and so many women that came out and I'm like, okay, God, <laughs> you know, these are souls that you desire to know you. And so there's so many things I think I can think my daughter who lives in Spain with her husband and my grandson, they're in a hot spot and I, all these things I can think about and I may never understand them, but I have to go back to those four words that I will be done. And the only way that doesn't overwhelm me is if I'm drinking daily, minute by minute of the cup that Jesus offers of living water. So hopefully these thoughts encourage you. Um, that coupled with yesterday's devotional, um, we are taking our eyes off the wind and the waves and we're fixing them on Jesus. Um, and, you know, sisters, if we need help to do that, let's call somebody and pray with somebody. Let's call somebody and share what we're going through. Um, the worst thing we can do is try to do it on our own um, and realize we're not doing it. <laughs> That's the worst thing we can do. It's it's in fact what the devil desires to isolate us. And um, the more isolated we are, the weaker we are. Um, and that's when he pounces. He doesn't fight fair. He, in fact, that's not a part of his vocabulary to fight fair. He waits until we're weak. So, you know, let's do what we can to be involved in each other's lives, in our neighbors' lives, those that we know um, are particularly um, at risk at this time. Let's Let's be those um, soul quenchers by, by us first drinking of that living water and ensuring that our souls are filled. Amen?